Okay, so well, with the news that WoW has gone down to 5.6 million subs, I thought I'd throw my hat into the ring here. Don't usually before. Because where do you see people commenting on these sub numbers? Every quarter. Because they're released every quarter. And everyone's got a tale of WoW. Usually people expect the game to be crafted specifically for them and specifically for their needs. And the thing that they think is majorly wrong with it, uh, they then use the sub numbers as absolute proof that they were right all along. Um, <clears throat> but we've seen this all the way since TBC when the numbers are released. Oh, they're not as high as they should be or they're not as high as they were a bit ago. Um, <clears throat> And, and they see it as evidence that the game is ending. Well, that was eight years ago, and it's been happening four times a year for eight years. So is the game ending? Of course it's not. Um, they're actually working very hard to get expansions out more quickly. Which, by the way, is not good news for us. Uh, a lot of players I've spoken to think, well, that's good for us, isn't it? No, uh, because it means you're having to repeat the level-up process, which... Although I enjoy it uh, for a bit of time, it's not the most enjoyable part of the game for me. The end game is the most enjoyable part. Um, <clears throat> so having to level up more often, no, that's not a good thing. I, and also you've been charged more for it as well because you've been charged an expansion pack more frequently as well. So it's absolutely for the people who want to make money. And also people will see this as evidence, oh well, that you know, World of Warcraft has been ending, it's not making enough money. Sub numbers have got very little these days to do with the actual money Warcraft is making. World of Warcraft, when it started out, made its money by selling the game and, and charging for the subscription. But now there's so much more they get money from. They get money from server transfers, from character renames, from race changes, from character boosts, from in-game cosmetic items, from the WoW token now. They, they say these sub numbers count the number of people who are using the WoW token. But bear in mind, the WoW token costs the person who buys it, I buy a few and then sell on the auction house, twice as much as a monthly subscription. So for every single person who's using a WoW token to pay for their month's gaming, Blizzard are actually getting the money equivalent of two older sub normal subscribers. Um, so money-wise, it's not looking bad at all. And of course, Blizzard have more than just one game. They have a number of games. And actually, as a company, they've never been better. Uh, next year they're going to make uh, an absolute bucket load of money because there's expansions coming up not just in World of Warcraft but other games as well that haven't required massive development costs people sometimes overestimate the, the actual costs of development development is more about getting the right creative people and giving them the time and resources but the resources is not a, a right load of money it's just the right amount of time in the right direction so that brings us on to the expansion. Of course, they're going to announce a little bit of it tomorrow. They're not going to announce lots and lots of features, but I think we can infer quite a lot about it. Uh, Blizzard have said, we're going to be very excited about it. Well, what generates a lot of excitement? Well, you can tell from when WOD was ex um, released. What generates excitement is nostalgia. It's really weird to me, um, but it does. I mean. Mists of Pandaria I thought was a great expansion. I thought it was brilliant. I loved every minute of it. A lot of people didn't and then they blamed the panda thing. Oh, I don't think the panda thing was an issue. I think it's just because it was genuinely new lore. Uh, I think a lot of people like World of Warcraft when it's built on top of Warcraft 1, 2 and especially 3. And what went back to that, it very, it, it very much built on um, Warcraft the old Warcraft story of the invasion of Azeroth. So, and I think they're going to go for it again because that's what excites people. So they're definitely going to do that old law. And then what law? Well, people keep going, oh, they're going to do a Naga story and things like that. No, they're not. Because they've said that they expect the film um, to bring in a whole load of new players. Um, and also they're trying to get the expansion to coincide with the film launch next year. So that basically means that whatever the expansion is next year is going to tie very much in with the film. And what's the film about? Well, actually, you'd have thought it tied in pretty well with Wad. Because, again, it's all about the opening of the Dark Portal and the Orc Storm in Azeroth. And it's about the first great war between the Orcs and the humans. So the next expansion has got to be very much based around that. Now, ugh, how's that going to work? It's not going to be more time travel and alternate universe, I hope. Um... 
but it has got to be based around that because otherwise that statement of theirs that they expect to bring in new players who watch the film and love the film and want to play the game uh, that wouldn't make an awful lot of sense if they come into the game and all of a sudden it's not really about the orcs versus humans thing at all so i i do think they're going to go back to that but in terms of the subscriber numbers i mean i haven't worried about the yes they've been declining and they've been declining quite steadily over time i haven't been at all worried about it for two reasons one i think we're very much in a cycle now where people log on to the game casual players this is and you've got to bear in mind casual players are at least 90 percent of the player base and they log in they devour the content because it's so the quality of life now it, it, every quality of life feature you look at it and you think that's really good that's really good but it's so convenient that casual players just devour the content really quickly and then they just on sub so they come in for a month sub for a month and then leave and then leave again so are the numbers really a reflection of how many people play world of warcraft across a year if we take it across a year i don't think so um and the second reason i'm not worried is there are mmos who manage to keep going and bring out regular expansions with not even a tenth of the subscribers that we've now plummeted to um so 5.6 everyone saying that was a really low number it's actually in mmo terms still a really high number in terms of subscriptions and i don't think it tells the full story of how many people what you might call actively play anyway because people are very much into getting a game playing it for a month and then going on to the next one anyway that's just the society we're in um so i don't think blizzard are doing badly on this one does that mean that i think warlords of drenor has been really good well obviously no but it is weird as to how it's not been good because when people talk about oh there's so much more to do in these previous expansions i always think what was there what did you do in cataclysm what was there in wrath what was there in tbc that there isn't now and i don't think I, I can't really think of anything all i think the problem was is that what is in wad is not engaging enough maybe it's because there's too much quality of life and it's too comfortable not to do it or to do it really quickly and then you get bored um apexis dailies for example is there anything really wrong with apexis dailies not as such the problem is that that's all there is for a certain section of the player base um, a bit more variety would have been better so perhaps a daily where some days there was an apexis daily some other days it was more like a molten front hub or um argent tournament type thing you know and things like this the, the the weekend things they've started to do maybe that's a step in the right direction i don't actually know it's, it's not really for me but maybe for more casual players that's more engaging i don't actually know um, but I do, sh when people say there's not enough to do, I do wonder if it's maybe just because it's now everything is too convenient. Um, because in terms of when I compare the content now with the content that existed um, in any expansion gone, I really can't say, yes, there's definitely less in Ward. I just think there's less variety, uh, but not actually less content. Uh, and I'm not even sure there's less variety. It's just that if, if there is a, anything that is missing, then perhaps that's it. But we'll we'll see tomorrow. I'll I'll listen to what they say tomorrow. I, but I don't think we're going to see very much. All I think we will get is some confirmation that they're going to do another nostalgia um, expansion, and it's going to be tied in with the film because they've pretty much already alluded to that. And beyond that, I don't think we're going to hear a huge amount tomorrow just generate a little bit of excitement then we'll probably hear more during blizzcon uh, but then that depends on how early they want to release the beta how soon is the beta ready maybe it's imminent who knows anyway that's my thoughts on the subject see you later